Hey, it's Jeremy with Strength in Numbers again. Where there's a will, there's a way. And where there's not a will, there's often a family fight. So I'm gonna show you today the basics of estate planning so you can make sure you have in place what you need to protect your family. I have some good news and I have some bad news. First, the bad news, you're gonna die. Yep, unfortunately, the mortality rate is still 100%. It's undeniable, but the good news is you can still protect your family even after you've moved on. So we're gonna talk today through basic estate planning and I'm gonna talk through four key areas that you need to have in place to make sure that even though they'll be mourning your loss, the financial aspect is a pain-free process when they get to that stage. So let's get into it. First thing we're gonna talk about is a will. Now I know you've probably heard about a will before, but just hear me out. It's commonly known as a will, but the real name is usually a last will and testament. That's the more legal name, so to speak. Here's the thing, all estates exist. You say, well, I don't have a $5 million. It doesn't matter, you still have an estate. It's just what you have in your possession, whether you have any assets or any money or anything, that's your estate, whether it's super small or super large. It doesn't matter, we all have an estate and all estates go through probate court, whether you have a will or you don't. What the will does is it dictates what should happen when it goes through probate court, okay? I don't want you thinking that it's like in the movies where you can just scroll down on a napkin and that that's gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. In almost every state, it has to be state-specific legal language to be a valid will in your state. So you need to make sure that you're using the right language, you're using a estate planning attorney to draft that up for you so that when they do need to probate that will, there's not gonna run into these big problems. Now all will does is it tells the court what to do with your stuff, and if you have kids, what to do with your kids. No will, that means your kids are now wards of the state, and that's how they enter foster care if both of you have passed away, if this is a couple that you know had kids versus a single. Either way, you need to make sure that you're protecting your family and the biggest first step, easy first step you can do is a will. Second thing we're gonna talk about is a living will, often known as a medical directive and I've also heard it callously referred to before as a do I unplug or do I not unplug document, which you may have heard that before, but uh, that's not the term I would use. But just in case you've heard that, that's the same situation. And this is simply a document that says, if I find myself, God forbid, in a situation where I'm alive, but I'm incapacitated, I'm in a coma, I'm in a vegetative state or whatever, I know all these happy things I'm talking about today, right? What do you do with me? What do I want you to do? And it's very important to have that because there's, legal, there's a legal issue there. And I've seen many clients where sometimes, you know, one sibling wants to do this and that's, that was mom or dad's wishes and the other end is fighting against it. The living will settles it because it's determined ahead of time before mom and dad are in that state. They've already said, this is what I want you to do. And so it's very important to have that living will in place and that's the second document you should have prepared. And the third kind of document you wanna have in place is a power of attorney. Not just any power of attorney, but a durable power of attorney. And so what this does is it gives over financial control to someone you trust in the event that your health is declining and you're anticipating you might lose your mental capacities if there's signs of dementia early on or Alzheimer's or things like that, especially those types of things, once you are uh, not able to make those decisions for yourself, you can no longer sign that power of attorney. The court will not recognize it because you're not in sound mind at that point. You need to be of sound mind when you sign this durable power of attorney. Now, in most cases with all three of these documents, the spouses are making mirrored documents if you're, if you're married to make each other the guardian of the children, of course, if the other one should pass away, and to make each other a durable power of attorney, things like that. But you should still have a backup person in mind as well, of course, in case, God forbid, there was a car accident and you both passed on at the same time. So again, fun stuff to talk about, I know, but very important stuff. Get that durable power of attorney in place. And the fourth thing that you need to have in place is actually not a document. It's communication. Very, very, very important that there's good regular communication on these matters and there's no surprises when god forbid you move on and they open the will and they go what there needs to be communication about this stuff 
And so if you are the child of someone and you don't know what's going on with the parents, will sit down and have a conversation with your parents. If you're the parent, you need to be communicating to your kids and siblings and all these other people that may be involved. You need to be sitting down and having those conversations. I recommend you have that conversation on a yearly basis. Sit down once a year, have a reading of the will, anything that needs to be updated or modified, things like that. Make sure everybody understands this is what happens when I pass. Here's where all the documents are. Here's who the attorney is, all that basic stuff. It doesn't have to be a very long meeting, but there can be no issue of someone going, I didn't know. No, and that's what causes the fights and what causes the problems is this miscommunication or lack of communication. So just as important as all these other documents is communication. Make sure you have regular, clear communication about how you want your estate handled when you do pass on. Well, I hope this has been a helpful the, uh, video for you. I know it's not the cheeriest of topics, but it's very important and most people do not have this in place. In fact, if, even if you don't have dependents, many people think you don't need a will, but if you're of 18 years of age or more, you should have a will in place. So I really hope that you apply these things in your life. Now on a lighter note, make sure you grab my free ebook, The Money Finder will help you in everyday topics that you can save on right now. And join my free Facebook group, the Strong Together Money Community. I'd love to have you there, part of the conversation where you can continue to learn, continue to grow. This has been Jeremy of Strength in Numbers, helping you keep your wallet heavy and your heart light.